Good morning, everybody. Want to hear a joke? Stop me if you've heard this one before. What is the difference between a freshly unearthed mass grave filled with fetid human corpses stacked six deep and the Herald Mail? Give up? One is a repugnant product of humanity at its ugliest and most primitive from which even the most hard-bitten and cynical among us must instinctively turn away. And the other is a freshly unearthed mass grave filled with fetid human corpses stacked six deep. The following comments are taken from editions of Mail Call printed in the Herald Mail from February 8th to February 21st, 2011, which can be viewed online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. First up from Smithsburg, for those of you who blame the Obama administration for lack of jobs, read the national votes in the Sunday paper, voting 184 to 242 against a Democratic bid to use House Resolution 38 to curb the practice of U.S. companies sending jobs overseas. And guess how our representative Bartlett, as well as Schuster, Pennsylvania, and Capito, West Virginia voted? No, of course, along with the rest of the Republicans. And you want us to believe the Republicans have the interest of the working people in this country? I don't want you to believe that. The weird thing is, apparently the Republican Party doesn't care whether you believe it anymore either. Local members of Congress, along with the rest of the Republican caucus, voting against the resolution you mentioned, the Republican governors of Wisconsin and Ohio openly working to eliminate collective bargaining rights for public employees in their states, the Republican governor of Florida refusing to accept billions in federal funding for a high-speed rail project that would have created tens of thousands of jobs in his state. It's like they're not even bothering to pretend to give a shit about working people anymore. And the sick thing is, the more the Republicans talk tough about eliminating public assistance for the poor, busting unions, cutting taxes for the super wealthy, the more the base eats that up. Has there ever been a more widespread case of mass battered person syndrome than poor people who vote Republican? Speaking of whom, as a lifelong Republican and now on disability and I have no health insurance, why doesn't our congressman, my Republican brothers in arms, want me to have health care? Why? I can't afford the big company health care. I'm looking into cheaper means, but why don't my Republican brothers want me to live? I'd like a representative of Roscoe Bartlett to explain to me why you don't want your Republican family to live. Hagerstown. Lifelong party member or not, if you're poor enough that you can't afford to buy your own health insurance, you're not really a part of his Republican family. In response to the caller about opening a no-kill animal shelter, I so much agree with you. I have been on that for years. So many counties around do have them, and there are so many people who would love to help take care of them, so let's quit talking about it and do something to make it happen. Boonesboro. Yeah, let's make it happen. Everybody, keep calling into mail call and talking about a no-kill shelter until there is one. If we all work together, we can make a difference. I think we should rename Pennsylvania Avenue Pennsylvania is not representative of our part of the country. They are very liberal, and extremely so. So I propose changing the name of Pennsylvania Avenue to, for example, Carolina Avenue. That has a nice ring to it. Hagerstown. This person's talking about Pennsylvania Avenue in Hagerstown, not Washington, D.C., I presume. It's a very important street in Hagerstown, very well known, because it leads out of town. Now, D.C. being the nation's capital has streets named after all 50 states. But why is there a Pennsylvania Avenue in a Hagerstown? Well, let's take a look at it and see if we can detect any clues that might help answer this question. Okay, here's Hagerstown on Google Maps. And here's Pennsylvania Avenue at the north end, starting at the end of Burhans Boulevard. Let's drive north a little way. There's the country club. Ooh, there's a Sheets right here at this intersection. Stop in if you're passing through and get hungry. I recommend the roast chicken sub, and make sure you try the onion rings. There's the airport. 
and hey, look at this, the state line. There's Pennsylvania, right there. Pennsylvania Avenue, Pennsylvania. See, they named the road Pennsylvania Avenue because it leads to Pennsylvania, which isn't quite as very liberal and extremely so as you seem to think. After all, remember, they did elect this guy to the United States Senate. It wouldn't make any sense to rename it Carolina Avenue. Although, Hagerstown already has a Virginia Avenue as well. Is that close enough for you? Virginia was a part of the Confederacy. This is to Chris Shank, Ronald Reagan Day. Ha! Why doesn't he solve some real problems? Smithsburg. The caller is talking about a bill introduced into the state legislature earlier this month, a few days before Ronald Reagan's 100th birthday, they would have designated February 6th as Ronald Reagan Day here in Maryland. It was introduced by my state senator, Christopher Shank, who intends to vote no, by the way, on a bill that will legalize same-sex marriage here in Maryland, thereby creating a immediate positive impact in the lives of thousands of our fellow Marylanders. Shank's against that, but he has no problem getting behind pointless ceremonial legislation like this which wastes everyone's time and does no good for anyone. By the way, Shank's bill failed, although our governor, Martin O'Malley, did issue a proclamation encouraging all of us Marylanders on Reagan's birthday to celebrate Ronald Reagan in an appropriate manner. I don't even know what that means. What's an appropriate manner for celebrating Ronald Reagan? Busting a union? Ignoring someone with AIDS? Republicans do that anyway. If this would be the Old West, which in some ways it should be, all this money wouldn't be spent on trials and retrials for the prisoner. They'd be taken out and shot or hanged, not set in prison like a king. Hagerstown. Do you imagine setting in prison to be one of the benefits of kinghood? This is another comment about what religion God is. God is not a religion or a God that someone makes up to suit yourself. God is the Bible God, and it is a relationship in Christ Jesus. Anything else is idol worship. Read your Bible and do not read false prophets. Hagerstown. <laughs> That's funny because if I were to ask a Muslim where I should look for the truth about God, I have a sneaking suspicion he would direct me to this book. He might also suggest that I learn Arabic, which is a little too much work for me. But that's beside the point. The point is, I have no more reason to believe you when you tell me to read this book than I do to believe my Muslim friend over here. In fact, from where I sit, this guy makes more sense than either one of you when he says that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. As long as we're on the subject, here's another call from a few days later. If you do not know the Bible, you do not know God. There is but one, and he resides in the hearts of those that believe by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and become born again. Making Numbers Count by Adrian Rogers proves there is order to everything. The Trinity is All Around You by Dr. D. James Kennedy proves all matter is triune, again proving order and indicating the fingerprints of God is everywhere. Thus, those that live to murder the word of the one and only God that died for the sins of the world will never find him. Amen. Martinsburg, West Virginia. So, because there is order in the universe, which, by the way, was not proven or even ever seriously addressed by Adrian Rogers, who was a televangelist and not a mathematician or a scientist, that order must be the direct result of the specific religious deity you believe in? And... Don't even talk to me about D. James Kennedy, Martinsburg, okay? I used to wake up every Sunday morning and watch that pompous twit on the Coral Ridge Hour, where I would watch him stand behind his ornately carved pulpit, clad in academic regalia, and deliver his nonsensical, often maniacal sermons with the carefully measured stilted cadence, which was uniquely his. I looked into the whole all matter is triune thing and found that it, 
like every other attempt by evangelicals to use science to support their religious dogmas, is based on a misunderstanding of a basic scientific principle. Kennedy claims that all matter is triune because it consists at its most basic level of electrons, protons, and neutrons. What Kennedy doesn't mention or doesn't know is that protons and neutrons are not elementary particles. They're made of quarks. There are six flavors of quarks, plus the electron, which is an elementary particle, plus five other types of leptons, plus four types of bosons, plus the hypothetical Higgs boson. That's 16 or 17 elementary particles. Not three, not any multiple of three. Kennedy also argues for the triune nature of the universe by claiming that reality consists of, and I'm quoting here, space, time, matter, and nothing else. Never mind that he fails to reckon with energy, antimatter, dark energy and dark matter, whatever they turn out to be. What I find most interesting is that Kennedy, who rejected evolution, by the way, was so overwhelmingly confident in the findings of science when he thought they agreed with him and so smugly dismissive of scientific knowledge when it contradicted his Bronze Age religious beliefs. Last but not least, even if D. James Kennedy was right and reality did consist of nothing but the three elements of space, time, and matter, and matter were constructed only of protons, neutrons, and electrons, that would prove absolutely nothing, nothing, regarding the truth of your religion. Can you prove that the trios of space, time, and matter, or proton, neutron, and electron, are in any way related to your religious concept of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If all matter being triune proves Christianity, why doesn't it also prove Hinduism, with its concept of the Trimurti? Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, or Buddhism, which teaches of the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, or Wicca, which includes the concept of the triple goddess, maiden, mother, and crone. And if a triune universe doesn't verify those other religions, which is what I presume you and the late D. James Kennedy would argue, why does it verify yours? And finally, I graciously applaud my local delegates for not supporting same-gender marriages. Clear spring. I don't think graciously is the word you want. Applauding someone for doing what you want them to do isn't gracious. Applauding a group of people gaining a basic civil right even though you personally disapprove of them. That would be gracious. Thanks for watching.